Hey guys, it's Chris from Steta, and today we're going to talk about Morimoto sequential LED turn signal lights for the front of your S550. They'll fit 2015 to 17 S550s as well as GT350s and GT500s. We'll go over a product review and then an installation video, and after that we'll show you how awesome they look on the car afterwards. So without further ado, let's get rolling. <laughs> Here we have the Morimoto LED smoked turn signals fitting your 2015 to 2017 Mustang S550. They're smoked, they're sequential, they have IP67 waterproof rating, and on top of that, they're really gonna make the front end of your car look awesome. The best part about these Morimoto LED turn signals is the fact that they are a plug and play installation, meaning you, all you have to do is install them, plug them in, and you're good to go. These LED turn signals are DOT, ECE, and SAE compliant. They're really easy to install, so let's jump into that installation. Kicking off the installation for the Morimoto sequential LED turn signals. You want to get the car on a lift or a jack and jack stand so we can get those front wheels off to get access to the fender liners to take the bumper off right here. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive in. Before you get the car up in the air, you want to go ahead and disconnect the negative battery terminal because what we're doing is messing with the electronics of the car and we don't want to have a short or anything like that. Once you have the car up in the air, you want to go ahead and take care of these push pins and Christmas trees. You have the brake duct for the 350s. Um, if you have a regular GT, it's going to be a similar process. You want to pull back this wheel well so you have access to the bumper tab and there's a bolt up here holding the plastic together against the bracket. Um, so again, you just kind of work your way through here, pull back, I would say probably to about here so you can pull the fender liner down from the car. That way you're not kind of bending it back and it's just really cramped and tight up here to get this particular bolt. So the more you can pull things back, the better. Some people I've seen have taken the whole fender liner out. I don't really think that's necessary, but uh, I'll show you how it's done. You grab your panel removal tool, makes things a lot easier. Kind of get under it, pull the inside out, and then this as well. Put them back together so you don't lose them. Do the same thing here. Now for these, I actually have a bra, so I have installed these uh, button head screws to attach the bra, but again, it's gonna be more push pins here as well, um, but slightly different for you if you don't have a bra installed. Back to the push pins. If you not picked up a panel removal tool for yourself, I would do that. I used to sit here with flathead screwdrivers taking forever and screwing up the push pins. If you plan on working on these modern Mustangs, a lot of them are held together with these push pins, so I would suggest picking up one of these tools for yourself. You have a seven millimeter bolt that's holding the bumper to the fender right here, as well as tabs, right? So what you're gonna need is a seven millimeter swivel socket that is going to make this the easiest job um, and a small extension to get in here, loosen this seven millimeter bolt, and that way you can pull the tabs out. There it is right there. Go ahead and set that aside as well. Then at this point, you're ready to get under the car, loosen up the splitter from the belly pan so you can get the whole bumper off. All right, with the GT350, you're going to have to take the belly pan off as well as the bumper cover. It's a little bit more cumbersome. Definitely want to have a second person. So you want to go through, get all those bolts and push pins out from the front all the way to the back of the belly pan. So once you have the car up in the air, we're gonna go ahead and take the bumper and splitter and disconnect it from the belly pan. There's a couple different ways to take the bumper off. You could detach the belly pan and bring everything out. Obviously it's a little bit more cumbersome, a little bit more difficult, especially for one person. Before we do that, obviously we'll go to the top as well and I'll show you what to do in terms of disconnecting that. Um, for the GT and EcoBoost and V6 cars, um, the process is relatively similar. There's going to be different bolts and push pins in different places, but again, you kind of want to take care of the splitter, the chin spoiler, 
get that disconnected from the belly pan. If you can't do that, or if it's easier for you, go ahead and take care of the whole belly pan. So for the 350s, it's a T27 Torx. All right, you got seven millimeter bolts right here. Go ahead and loosen those up. Process for here, if you have a non GT350 or 500, um, you will go ahead and remove the plastic radiator cover here. It's a bunch of push pins, just like the wheel liners. Um, and then up here, you notice we have all of these bolts holding on the bumper cover to the car. Um, don't forget, these little guys here in the end. Now keep in mind, like I said, I do use a bra um, for those long trips. So uh, I've replaced it with a J clip and a screw, but for the uh, pretty much all Mustangs with this type of bumper cover, V6 EcoBoost GT, 15 to 17 cars, um, it's a five and a half millimeter bolt, kind of an awkward size, but definitely something you wanna make sure you have ahead of time. And then uh, the rest of these are eight millimeter all the way through. And uh, then at that point, you're ready to take this thing off. Then at this point, you're ready to pop the tabs out and then take the bumper cover off. Would recommend having a second person. It is possible to do it with one, but especially if you have that belly pan still attached, it's going to be a little difficult. Um, I'll go over a couple things. The parking light assemblies with the 15 to 17 cars, they actually have two separate connectors. The 350s, in order to kind of get around those coolers, you have one connection on the driver's side. I want to make sure those are disconnected or as you're taking it off. Again, this is why there's two people. Um, you can uh, go ahead and disconnect those. It can be done with one person, but definitely a lot easier with two. All right, so now that you have the bumper cover off, full disclosure, this is kind of a pain in the butt for GT350s. You're gonna have a lot easier of a time when it comes to the GTs, the EcoBoost, the V6s, but uh, when it comes to the 350, everything's fitting in here like a puzzle because of those coolers. So just kind of bear with me and uh, we'll work our way through it. You got seven millimeter sockets. Set everything off to the side. Everything's seven millimeter here. We'll go ahead and unhook these. Wouldn't hurt to take your panel removal tool, get this kind of set off to the side so you don't harm any of the wiring. So before I go any further, what we're doing, this whole grill has to come out because this grill is attached to this duct here for the, uh, I believe that's the oil cooler, transmission cooler on the passenger side, um, before you can get to the turn signal. So just kind of get as much of it out as you can. that kind of falls off to the side. You can set it over there. Now you have access to this. The best part is this is molded to the lower grill, meaning that you have to get a couple screwdrivers and start prying this off. I promise you the second side is a lot easier than the first. So just start prying. 
there we go. Okay, now we're moving. So, <clears throat> you keep working through on these tabs. Another seven millimeter. They keep popping out of me. All right, now we're cooking. Oh, we are so close. Here you can see the clear difference between the factory turn signal housing and the Morimoto sequential LED turn signal housing. Um, smoked lens, a lot more aggressive. It's gonna do the sequential thing. Um, definitely gonna bring the front end of your uh, S550 up to the next level. Um, I'm excited to uh, get rid of this clear orange amber bulb thing going on and update it to LED. All right, so next up, I'm gonna go ahead and fish this through. It's probably gonna make matters easier to go ahead and bolt this into place before you uh, start putting everything back together. All right, then at this point, you're ready to start putting everything back together. So you see this on the corner here. This is gonna, what you're gonna wanna lined up over here. Kinda do the same thing with the other side. See it starting to poke through. Start pressing these back in. Again, everything kind of snaps together. If it doesn't, then it's not going together the right way. You're pressing on the plastic, the black plastic on the front of the bumper. pushing everything back together. And then your two nuts with the, I'm sorry, your two bolts with the washers built in go to the J clips on the outside here. You get those started and you're ready. Ready to take care of the rest of your seven millimeter bolts. Now, once you have everything snapped in and tight, you're ready to mount the ballast. Now, this part's kind of optional. I should say optional in terms of how you do it. Um, what I'm doing is I'm drilling a hole on either side here through the mounting holes and you can get some self tappers. I decided to go with a black zip tie and just loop it through. Um, and that way you can kind of not have to worry about it flopping around or getting in the way of anything. And uh, you can just zip tie the wiring harness out of the way as well. So what you want to do is get the wiring aimed up in a way so it's not up against anything. Drill bit wide enough for a, then you grab some diagonal pliers, snip away the excess, throw it aside. Then at this point, 
You already hooked these guys up. Here, click. And here, another click. There it is. Then you have this Christmas tree over here. Now I would suggest kind of taking everything over here. Wouldn't put anything too much in a bind, but. And zip tying it out of the way. I want to make sure everything's all tight. At this point, you're ready to put the bumper back on the car. All right, at this point, you're ready to put the bumper cover up into place. Little tech tip, uh, we're actually using a lift here, obviously, so we're gonna set a trash can here in order to set the belly pan on top of the trash can, get a couple bolts so the cover's holding itself up into place. Then at that point, we can take care of the rest of the bolts and push pins. If you're on a jack and jack stands, you could potentially use one of your wheels or a block of wood, something to kind of hold it up into place as you are able to finagle it back up and onto the car. Go ahead and take care of the negative battery terminal. We don't want to forget that. Just set it in the place so you can stick your head inside the car. Check to make sure they turn on. Looks perfect. Make sure the sequential's working. Both sides, hazards are on. Man, those look cool. All you do is lift up on the center. Make sure they're lined up right here. Make sure that you're lined up Am I going to push this in yet? Yeah. Now, next up, once you have these kind of set into place, everything's lined up as it should, get under the car, go ahead and put two of these bolts back in on the bottom side so you can lift the car back up. Realistically, you can put any screws back in on the belly pan. We decided to go on the furthermost rear because it's going to hold it best up into place. And then once you've tightened everything down, you can go ahead and move to the wheel wells and do the side and then the top. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and put this screw back into place. Remember you need that swivel socket, it really helps things quite a bit. And after that, you're ready to start putting the wheel liner back into place. If you have a 350, make sure you get that brake duct lined up in the hole. And then you can start putting push pins back in. I would do a select few just to get things holded in, or held in place. And that finishes up this wheel liner, so then you wanna move over and do the same thing on the other side. Next up, you wanna take care of these top bolts holding the bumper on, make sure everything's properly lined up before you bolt it down. Now, like I said, keep in mind, I have um, some special hardware in here for the bra, but you'll have bolts all the way across, get everything started, and then tighten it down. And tighten the rest down, plug in your negative battery terminal, make sure everything works, and you're good to go. All in all, insulation really wasn't too bad. Now on the GT350s and 500s, and if you were to attempt this on a Mach 1, with the coolers in the way and everything else involved with those extra grills and holding the turn signal into place, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated to install these things. However, if you have a regular 2015 to 17 S550, it's not gonna be hard at all. And obviously, they definitely look the part too. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel to see other Morimoto videos, all encompassing installation, product reviews, everything you need on the S550 Mustang. If you're looking to purchase Morimoto lighting for your Mustang or Ford, be sure to hit us up at Stita.com. 
Go ahead and comment below. Let us know what you think about these lights on this S550 and if you were to pick them up for your car. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get the notification right on your mobile device when the next video drops. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.